creepy and bizarre TikToks that might melt your whole reality. Let's go. This is LG's signature OLED T. So it's the world's first 4K wireless transparent TV setup. And it looks absolutely beautiful. When you see this firsthand, how they've done this, where you can basically see everyone behind here, like walking, but it's crisp, it's beautiful, very vibrant. And of course, of course the presentation is on point. Like, hello everybody behind there. That's awesome. He goes hard every single year. This year they have transparent screens and the clarity and color is surprisingly really good. Next up, I saw EcoFlow's booth. This year they have a stackable energy solution called the Delta Pro Ultra. Looks like an absolute beast that can power your whole home. Next, I saw these speakers with transparent screens on them. These are super cool in person and I definitely want to get my hands on these. Right in the center of where we were was this gigantic sphere. This is Bali by Samsung and it's a little smart robot companion that can project things on the wall check up on your pet What do we have here? It looks like a flying car. Yes, it's our flying car. It's our virtual flying car from China, Guangdong, Huitian. Yeah, it can take it can take off vertically and uh, uh, and landing. It's a pure electric uh, flying car. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just like a, a super cool super car and uh, it, it uh, equipped the flying systems and it can aut automatically uh, close and open. Yeah, and uh, maybe you can drive on the road and, uh, and, uh, and uh, fly in the air. It has two seaters. In, in, in. And then how, what is the range when it flies? How far can it fly? Oh, it's still in the uh, R&D process. But it flies, right? Yes, have it can fly. It? Yeah, maybe you can see the, see the screen. This is the prototype, pro, yeah, prototype last year, mm -hmm. and uh, it made our uh, test flight last year, and it's successfully. Uh, it's just like, uh, a, yes, it's our flying car. It's our virtual flying car from China, Guangdong, Huitian. Guys, here, I, yeah. I'm it trying to take, lower it so you can see the full thing. And, uh, uh, and the landing. It's Look at this thing. Flying car. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just like a, a super cool supercar. This is a flying car slash helicopter. How cool is this? Look at the inside. Can you imagine? You know, hey, you can turn that. Oh yeah, this one got a little horsepower to it. It's the new jet wave, y'all. But yeah, back on this helicopter man this this car slash helicopter man that's nuts and uh, it, it uh, equipped the flying systems and it can aut automatically uh, close and open yeah and uh, maybe you can drive on the road and uh, and uh, and uh, fly in the air it have two seaters in, in, in and then, how, what is the range when it flies? How far can it fly? Oh, it's still in the uh, R&D process. But it flies, right? Yes, Have it you can fly. It? Yeah, maybe you can see the, see the screen. This is the prototype, pro, yeah, prototype last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it made our... Uh... What's good, everybody? If you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, what do you guys think about that flying car? That was nuts. Man, I could sure use one of them bad boys. But it probably wouldn't even start in this weather we're having to be real with you. But hey, let's get back into this futuristic technology. These scary technology clips. It's scary seeing how this technology is advancing from translucent TVs to flying cars. And man, did you see that dome earlier? And bizarre TikTok that will melt your entire reality. So let's go. Oh, 
it's transforming. The wings pop out that boy. carro así que ustedes puedan simplemente llegar abre las alas y ready oh wow oh. wow the helicopter blades This is where we're at. Is this where we're at, y'all? You're going to need a parachute with this, with every purchase. Oh, this is a side view. Nowadays, it's like, why would you even get a supercar, spend millions of dollars on a supercar if it can't fly? Oh my goodness. You can buy this flying car in 2024. The Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer Xpeng Motors unveils its new flying car that can travel on the road and in the air. The vehicle is equipped with a foldable dual rotor mechanism, and it helps the car to transform from normal mode to flying mode. To enhance flying car safety, the company also developed a multi-parachute rescue system. The cost of this flying car is $137,000. You can buy this flying car in 2024. Dang, they only want, I mean, 137000 is a lot. But I thought it was going to cost a million or two. They said, just give us 137000 and we'll have you flying tomorrow. Where are you trying to go? What, you got traffic on the highway? You don't got to worry about that no more. You just got to hit this button. Man... And you can get it this year, 2024. Would you guys use one of these? Drop in the comments below. Would you use one of these flying helicopter slash car supercars? Say if you had a chance to get one, you got one. Would you use it? Yes or no? Y'all got to let me know. Me? You already know. I'm flying. I got places to be. We're gone, y'all. But let's keep it rolling on these waters, man. I like these. I like this episode, you know. This is scary how futuristic this technology is, man. These creepy TikToks, these scary TikToks. The future is scary. like they're on the moon or something yeah this is the future you want to get the best camping spot we about to bust out this drone this drone is going to put can carry up to 200 pounds of extra carry-on luggage we're going to load up in this drone and we're taking off 
A helicopter popping up out of your car, y'all. RV days are over with. This is the future. Oh, you RVing and you don't got a drone? Oh, you don't, you don't know what's going on. You, you're not hip. That's nuts. A whole personal helicopter. This is what it's going to look like on some Star Wars type stuff. Like coming up. Look, they got the Mercury rectifiers on each wheel. Do you see that? The Mercury rectifying. Why y'all think it's blue? It's Mercury rectifying. What is this? This looks like, it looks like car slash helicopter is the new wave. Man. It looks like for just a couple hundred thousand, you, you could be flying and driving at the same time. Helicopter wise slash car, you know, for a couple hundred thousand. It looks like that's the wave now. Boy, well, he's loving it. Bro, I just pulled up to this booth in CES, and they have a V8 engine PC. This shit is kind of looks like an engine. They got the dual. The dual radiator, that shit is... Wow, an engine PC for 10,000, a V8 engine PC? I'm thinking about building my own. Well, I am building my own. And, um, yeah, I'm learning all about these radiators, these fans. You got I-7s. You got uh, R9 Ryzen, which is what I'm probably going to go with. You got uh, Intel 13th, 14th generations, I-7, I-8. Um, you got cooling fans. Um power supplies I, yeah i'm gonna try to build my own man um you gotta put the ram in you know and just hope it all works together you know but the fact that they turning these boys into engines now it's man they must have some serious graphic cards in there they must have two three four graphic cards in there you know it wouldn't be that hard to hit a 10k v8 engine pc i mean the look is aesthetic and nice but it would, really wouldn't be that hard had to slap a couple you know what four four nineties even two well you probably need about four four nineties in there you know 
I don't know if it could, it'll be possible to run dual processors. I never heard of that, you know, and it looks like I'm seeing some water cooling. Ooh, that boy getting kind of cold with today. Uh, it's been a couple of days. I've been, you know, I've been learning about technology just because I have to build my own PC. This, this is my first time. I might go live with it. If you, if that's something you guys are interested in, drop it in the comments for me going live with this, uh, me building my first PC. But yeah, it looks like they got some water cooling. This might be a intake. Um, this is nuts. You know, I'm sure it's going to run crispy, you know. But yeah, technology is fascinating. dollar because it has crazy features like it will automatically walk your baby for you they have a power assist option that will help you for when you need to push your baby up a hill it even has sensors that surround the stroller and they detect obstacles like bikes or cars and stop the stroller just in case and inside the stroller it has a white noise feature that will put your baby to sleep as well as a story time feature the stroller even connects to an app where you can decide if you want to use the aggressive rocking feature or the smooth rocking feature. Now this stroller is huge and it is not light. It's super heavy but it does fold of course just like this but even when it folds it's still not compact. I wonder if we'll be seeing these things roaming autonomously with babies around the street one day. This smart stroller costs $2,400 because it has crazy Hey that's a nice stroller. This is DICE Digital Curated Experience. It is a personal mobility that will be utilized as a hailing mobility, such as Uber, you would have an app, call it to you. It's fully AI, robotics driving technology, and powered by hydrogen fuel cell technology. You would board the vehicle, put your phone into the armrest. From there, the onboard AI will connect with your phone. It'll data mine and go through text, uh, text messages, email, social media, web browsing history, schedule, and it'll create a digitally immersive experience personalized to you. All three windows are actual digital screens. Once it personalizes to you, it'll make the presumption if you are a businessman, it becomes a mobile office. If you're a child who enjoys video games, an immersive video game environment. The AI service agent ideally would make preemptive decisions for you based upon your points of interest. Drive by some shops that you would normally uh, per make purchases at. It can turn into an online e-commerce platform to make purchases directly from DICE. This is DICE Digital Curated Experience. It is a personal Man, they trying to money up. LG has a transparent TV called the LG Signature OLED T. There is a contrast film that goes up or down using the remote controller. When it's up, it looks like a normal TV and what you would expect from an OLED. When the film is down, even though it's transparent, what you're watching is still very visible. Even scrolling through the menu, it gives off a 3D feel. When you're in this mode, you can display art or any useful information like the weather. And the animations in this weather app look so dope in person. Even when it's changing seasons or just the weather conditions, it all just pops. You can get tons of information on the bottom of the screen, which they call the T-Bar. All the electronics are housed on the bottom and is all connected through their connect box. Therefore, no visible wires and this whole setup looks so clean. It's 77 inches, 120 hertz, and no price was given. So as the first wireless transparent OLED TV, I'm sure this is going to be super expensive. So how much do you think this will cost? LG one hundred and twenty hertz option. Let's try uh Let's try doing it as a custom resolution. I'll just break it. I've seen this place get pretty effed up for like days from doing this. Curiously, it seems to be doing some kind of weird chroma subsampling nonsense. It doesn't look quite as sharp. You, can, you got like kind of a green fringing on these windows and stuff. Got another disappointing update for you, Brandon. Check this out. You can configure the display mode and the game mode does in fact improve the input lag. So that feels, that feels pretty darn good. 
Unfortunately, if I don't want warm colors, it changes me to user mode, <laughs> and it's mushy input again. <laughs> Why? Then, making matters worse, this is super annoying, I have another dead pixel! Do you know how much each of these pixels costs? If you spent seven grand on a stupid clear TV, you'd want all the pixels to work too. Viewing angles are surprisingly decent. It does turn a little bit bluey, greeny once you get to kind of an extreme angle, but as long as you're within reason, I'd say it's pretty darn good. Let's play some video games, shall we? One benefit of the hockey puck approach is that the built-in speaker is actually not terrible for a TV. They say they support Dolby Atomos. Yeah. But I don't think this thing support HDR. They really? didn't mention, they did, at least they didn't mention it on the spec sheet. Here are some of the coolest tech products I've seen so far at CES. This was my first trip ever to CES, so I didn't really know what to expect, but some of these products kind of blew my mind. I mean, Las Vegas itself kind of blew my mind. This city is so weird. That's the real thing. First up has to be this dual screen laptop from Asus. It has two beautiful 3K OLED displays and comes with this Bluetooth keyboard that you can snap right on and have a normal laptop again. In person, this laptop felt so light to hold, which is the total opposite of this next product, which at first glance looks pretty boring, but trust me, it's not. So this thing is called Parky and it's an automatic valet for your car. It literally can move a car. So it works by sliding underneath your car when you're ready to park, uses this mechanism to pick up the car and then move it into an open parking space. Insane, but not as insane as this real life hologram. Okay, I gotta chill with the transitions here. <clears throat> so this giant box thing uses multiple cameras and a special display to be able to make a person feel like they're in the room with you. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than talking to someone on a Zoom call. But what is perfect is this oh high-tech ice cream machine that lets you make ice cream right in your own home. It's called Cold Snap, and you just have to put in this little can that contains ice cream somehow, stick it into the top of the machine, press a button, and in a couple minutes, you have perfect soft serve ice cream. They didn't let me try it because the ice cream had burgundy somehow. Well, when, when did ice cream get burgundy in it? This trip has been super fun. I've gotten to meet a bunch of other creators and see so many cool tech products let me know if you guys want a part two down in the comments here's some of the coolest tech products ink display meaning that hypothetically you could add a toilet leaderboard right on top of it but is that more ridiculous than drone soccer where you have to drive a drone through the hoop like in Quidditch? i'm not sure if they meant to design this robot to look exactly like ratchet from ratchet and clank but the resemblance is uncanny and if you thought you were safe from our robot overlords by going up a flight of stairs well you might want to think again i'm not sure who's in the market for a 1500 dollars designer cat litter box thing but yeah it exists if you want one on top of scooping the poop it also auto seals the poop bag so Forget about your headphones or our home theater system because this is a $10,000 chair with 20 built-in speakers and 3,000 watts of power. What you're seeing here is the XEO or I guess Geopod at CES. And even though it looks like something out of the future, built into this little seat capsule is a chair built in with 20 speakers with two of those speakers being six and a half inch subwoofers with of course built-in Dolby Atmos. And I couldn't believe how good it sounded, especially on how it enveloped you with sound. And what's crazy is that because it's kind of like a capsule, people outside of it couldn't really hear it. The chair also comes with lighting, of course, and the ability to change the sound according to whichever part of the seat you're actually sitting in, which I guess can't be that much because it's a single seat. So the question is, do you think this chair is worth $10,000? Forget about- up, I saw a waterproof pair of bone conduction headphones. After that, I got to check out this fully portable LG monitor that folds away like a suitcase. And guys, this is how we're going to travel around in the future in our very own single person helicopter. Hate mowing the lawn? With this robot, you'll never have to again. And at the world's most high tech Walmart, they do grocery deliveries with drones using zipline technology. This LG TV goes from OLED level picture quality to completely transparent. And right next to it, I saw this self driving car that features two massive curved monitors in the front and even even has a wine fridge and gaming console in the trunk. The coolest part though is that the seats turn around so you can face the backseat passengers. Up next I head over to the Google booth where I get to check out a bunch of their new phones. I like this one in particular because if you hold your hand up for two seconds it can take a selfie without you ever pressing a button. This gaming PC is water cooled and built just like a V8 engine. How cool is that? This vest uses 40 vibration motors to target specific points in your chest and back while gaming. The second I zipped it up I immediately felt like Batman. This was so much fun to play I couldn't help but smile. And here's a visual representation of how-
This is a quarter million dollar TV. What if I told you that this plant right here from Neo Plants purifies indoor air 30 times better than a regular plant? It's been bioengineered to do that. So if you put one of these in your house, it's like having 30 house plants in your home in terms of how it purifies the indoor air. Pretty cool. What if I told you? Bioengineered plants? that can purify the air 30 times better than regular house plants? That is insane. We're here at Samsung Display's CES booth and we got to check out some new foldable display concepts that the company was showing. And one of the most interesting ones was the Flex in and out Flip. So this is essentially, it kind of looks like a Galaxy Z Flip, but instead of only closing inwards, you could actually bend it all the way backwards. And again, these are just concepts. They're not actual products, so you won't be able to buy them, but this is really just meant to showcase Samsung's display technology. And then there's plenty of other devices here too. There's foldable screens in all shapes and sizes. A bunch of them we saw last year as well, like the Flex Hybrid, but it, it's really interesting to see um, what Samsung is doing with the technology and the types of form factors that it's thinking about. I like how it kicked out the side. That was neat. Man, this is like some Star Trek technology now. But here's the Star Wars technology. Look, they got an actual hologram now. It looks like he's inside the box. Wow. This reminds me of that Tartarian technology. Speaking of that Tartarian technology, didn't they have one with the wheel that went down? accessibility focused tech I got to take a look at. This is Gyro Glove. It's a wrist mounted spinning gyroscope that aims to help steady the hand movements of people who suffer debilitating tremors. The product volunteer who has an advanced stage of Parkinson's disease tried writing their name and drawing spirals with and without the glove and they were extremely impressed and excited about the improvement to their ability. I tried it out myself and while I don't have the same difficulty writing, I immediately felt the gyroscope resisting any jerky hand movement. This next one is called Wisp an app with a focus on helping people with impaired speaking ability. The software cleans up speech in real time and outputs that same voice with more clarity. In this instance, the demo person was whispering into a microphone on an extremely loud convention floor. The app was able to isolate this down to this. Welcome to this demo and CS2024. This last one is Audio Radar. It's meant to help deaf gamers experience spatial sound using light bars fitted around the edges of your monitor. In games like PUBG, the light indicators glow from green to red depending on how close the sound is in game. This can alert you to enemy direction and proximity. Audio Radar also has integration with Minecraft so that the lights change color depending on if the noise is friendly, from an enemy, or purple for an ender dragon. That oh, is tight. Of course, it has a ring light mode for any streamers out there.
That is very nice. That looks scary. You gotta be careful around them drones, man. Oh, it got, it got a little scary. Ooh. Is it quite Wow, these are the new construction vehicles. Wow. That thing can transform. You can't tell me that thing's not going to transform. Above today's sights, thinking of the environment of tomorrow, for your safety. Human history. Human history. Dead Teslas are rotting in the charging stations. Oh, we got a bunch of dead robots out here. Due to the extreme cold weather, Tesla drivers are left frustrated. Nothing, no juice, it's still on 0%, and this is like three hours this morning being out here, after being out here eight hours yesterday. Has it been charging? No, not at all. It just isn't working. At all. It's just frozen, and so I'm now getting it towed to the um, Tesla service center because that's my only option at this point. <laughs> Man, this is crazy, it's, it's, it's a disaster. Seriously. With temperatures falling under zero, these charging ports stop charging, turning charging stations into car graveyards. Batteries of the Teslas have to be at certain limits so they can charge. And with this cold weather, they're draining faster than they're charging. No response from Tesla. We have been suffering since yesterday uh, afternoon. These are unusually cold temperatures, but do you find this acceptable? No, not at all, not really. Driving an electric car when it's really cold outside, this is such a hot idea. Really? She was knocked out. Hey, wake up, dude. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> hey, wake up, dude. <laughs> wake up. Get out of the office, man. You can't be in the office, man. You can't be in the office. I wasn't 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 in the office. I
You I just was taking a loan, man. You can't be in this office. Man. Man. You can't you cannot be in this office. How can I help you? You I gotta be in this office. I gotta deliver it, bro. You can't, don't never come in here, man. I understand. Don't you. Call them shit. There's a button at the gate that you press, man. Hey, wait a minute. I pushed the button. Sleep, okay, man. Man. Okay, I'll take I'm gonna take care. Don't just come in this office like that, man. Well, Why he grabbed the flashlight? Hey, bro. He knocked out too. Look at him sleeping good. Hey, man. Hey, you can't be in the office, man. You gotta get out of the office, man. Hey, bro, you wasn't even asleep, though, bro. I wasn't, I wasn't in the sleep. I just you wasn't asleep. I just was taking a loan, man. You can't be in this office, man. You can't be in this office. How can I help you? You gotta be in this office. I gotta deliver it, bro. You can't. Don't ever come in here, bro. He was serious, y'all. Don't just come in his office like that. <laughs> he said, I've been pressing a button, man. Oh, my goodness. It'd be tough out here, man. You never know what somebody be going through, man. 12 hours on the job. You know, he might have been pulling a 16-hour shift. Who knows if he work another job, man. It's tough out here. I ain't saying him in general. Yo, 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 yo. It'd be scary. It'd be scary on the job because you know the it might be the boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Letting all types of quality slide. Yeah. Oh no! Λοιπόν, με το που το κλείσω, το drone θα γυρίσει ακριβώς. Six thousand dollars drone crash. Bring it back towards you. Ow. I flew five kilometers from the shore to check this cruise ship. It's called the Viking. It's huge and beautiful. Thirty percent battery. I need to go back to the shore. Samui Island looks tiny from that distance. I got only 15% left. Wow, you can do all that with a drone? Go. The drone activated emergency landing. The speed is dropping. I've made it to the shallow water, so at least I can find it there. 0% battery, but one kilometer to the shore. I see the boat. It's my only chance to save the drone. Scary. I could see some wires. The connection is lost. I hope it landed safely. I found a local fisherman. He will help me to get to the boat. It's 600 meters away. I hope the drone didn't catch any wires and landed safely. Oh yes, it's here. Woohoo! I was certain it was the end, but luckily I got the drone without any damage. That was pretty cool. I didn't know drones went that far. That was interesting.
icing. That's it for today's episode. If you guys made it this far, drop the 100s in the comments so I know you real. I appreciate all you guys. And thank you for checking this video out. And yeah, this has been a creepy and bizarre TikTok. Melt your whole reality. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.